Praise God. Hallelujah. Any good? Praise God. I'm so glad you're here tonight. I hate preaching to empty chairs, but I'm glad you're here tonight. Praise God. Turn me over to Proverbs, the third chapter. You know, I remember as a, a child growing up, uh, Proverbs was where I lived, I think. And uh, then I ran into a lady several years later in ministry called Marilyn Hickey. And, um, you know, and she just enhanced my life in, in the area of Proverbs. And, and uh, you know, what's so neat about Proverbs, there's 31 chapters in Proverbs. You can read a chapter every day of the month. And uh, God's, God will have a word for you. And uh, believe me, uh, you never can. If, when you're reading the word of God to hear from God, you will see something. Absolutely. I mean, God will make sure that you see it. Yeah. And, you know, we live in a, we live in a world that um, puts great value on knowledge. Uh, the universities and the colleges and the things that are out there. Uh, there's, there's great emphasis put on, uh, make sure you go to college and, you know, get your degree and, and, uh, you know, those kind of things. And knowledge is good. It's good to have knowledge. <laughs> Amen. But, I, but uh, that's right, Royce. It's good to, ha it's better to have wisdom. But, you know, wisdom, uh, wisdom is different than knowledge. Knowledge is, you know, the knowing of something. Of course, that's very simple, uh, to know something, to have information, but uh, wisdom, wisdom is, is, okay, I've got this knowledge, but what do I do with it? Right. Wisdom is, is how you take knowledge and apply it. And, and if you don't have wisdom, you'll apply knowledge wrongly. Yeah. And, and you're going to find the wisdom of God, the mind of God, in his word. He makes it very plain in his word what his will is. People may try to muddy it up, but, but when you're seeking God, the Bible says that when you seek, you'll find. And when you're seeking God for answers, you'll find the answers in him. But knowledge, it's good to have knowledge. Everybody needs to have knowledge. I mean, it's good that your mama taught you how to get up and brush your teeth and put your clothes on. Amen? That's knowledge. Uh, wisdom is you better do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because once you go outside the door, <laughs> you go outside the door with no clothes on and you're in big trouble. But, uh, but here, uh, the definition for wisdom is actually the quality or state of being wise, knowledge of what is true or right, coupled with just judgment as to action, discernment, or insight. So you can have a lot of knowledge, but if you don't know how to apply that knowledge uh, in a proper, correct way, you're just going to get foolishness. You're, you're going to just have, you know, one mistake after another. And, you know, we see that, uh, you know, with, with this, uh, this millennial generation, you know, the ones that are, you know, 18 years to 45 years old, uh, in, in that bracket, you see that, uh, they have a lot of, they've made great emphasis on college and universities and education. And, you know, and that's all wonderful. Uh, but what, but they don't know, a lot of them don't know what to do with that knowledge. And what's unfortunate that a lot of that knowledge is false. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so, so they're, so they're taking falsehoods. They're taking, um, they're, they're taking what they perceive as truth and try to apply it to life and then they're frustrated because it doesn't work. <laughs> because they have knowledge but they don't have wisdom. And I believe that pure unadulterated wisdom comes from the Word of God. Amen. It comes from God. You're not smart enough to live life. Really? Not very good. I don't know about you, but I, I spent a lot of years fumbling around in life. And, and, and I was a teenager that sat on my bed at my, at my home, at my parents' house, and cried out to God for wisdom. But I still made some pretty dumb mistakes in my life. I, I wanted wisdom, but I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge. 
And you've got to have the proper knowledge to get wisdom's finest results. And, 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 and in my, my frustration of wanting wisdom, my main reason I wanted wisdom is because I didn't want to be wrong. Because wrong told me, if I was wrong, told me I was bad. And so, so my desire from wisdom, for wisdom was I didn't want to be bad anymore. I, I wanted to have the right answers. And, and if I didn't think I had the right answers, I beat myself up <laughs> and, and told me I was stupid. You know, we all have these inward conversations with ourselves. And, and so it was important for me to have wisdom but I didn't know how to get knowledge. And I, you know, I went to Sunday school almost all my life. We had Sunday school back then, not children's church. You know, you went to Sunday school for an hour, and then you transitioned from Sunday school to church. And uh, we didn't have children's church, so to speak. You know, we, we sat in church. <laughs> and uh, if we didn't sit still and weren't quiet, we got taken to the bathroom. And it wasn't to use it. And, um, uh, I, I mean, I, many a times my dad would reach around my mom and thump me on the side of the head, you know. And, uh, but, uh, you know, you can't have wisdom without knowledge. And knowledge is practically useless. It's not totally useless, but it's practically useless without wisdom. Amen. And we've got a bunch of educated millennials with no wisdom. Because they were brought, most of them were brought up godless. And God is wisdom. God is love. God knows how he made the earth. God knows how he made you. And, and God, God is wisdom. He just doesn't have wisdom. Just like we say God is love, he just doesn't have love, he is love. God is wisdom. And here in Proverbs is just a... Uh, a phenomenal book concerning wisdom. And um, uh, let's, let's go ahead and start in, in chapter 3. Let's look at verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Otherwise, don't depend on your knowledge. You may be the smartest person in the face, on the face of this earth. Your IQ could be off the charts, but you could be as stupid as a, as a post. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you, you, you may have a lot of knowledge, but you won't have, some, some of them don't have a whole lot of wisdom in, in their knowledge. So he says, don't lean on your, your own understanding. You can look at something and say, you know, oh, I see that. You know, I, I somewhat understand that. But you may not see the wisdom behind it. You know, sometimes we look at things that, that, you know, God, God does in our lives or maybe in somebody else's life. And, and on the surface level, we question God. Yeah. You, know, why, you know, why did that happen? And sometimes he'll tell us, sometimes he won't. But God is so wise. Yeah. I remember a, a, a dear friend of mine uh, that was a minister, loved him dearly, uh, was, was gr of great value in pastors in my life. And um, when he passed away, um, you know, I, I questioned God. I mean, don't you, usually when you lose somebody you love or lose a situation, you know, God, what, you know, what are you doing here? And, and this is what the Lord spoke to me. He says, you don't, you can't comprehend my wisdom in the matter. See, because we think we know, know knowledge, have knowledge of the circumstance, but we don't, most of the time, we don't have wisdom. See, God is wise. We had a little uh, gal, the Krogers, most of you know Pastor Tony and Mary Kroger. Uh, their, uh, their son and daughter was raising a, a, a foster child, uh, and she was like the family. And most of you know the circumstance. She was killed in a head-on collision, and Allison was back there at the time. In fact, she was staying with the girls. And, you know, it was a really a traumatic situation. And, you know, and that kept being the question of the night. Why? You know, why? 
And, you know, I, I don't know that I have all the answers, but, you know, I watched this little girl's life, and from one year to the next, I saw a change in her. And, 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 and don't, don't get me wrong, I am not saying that God killed this girl. I'm not. The devil took her out way too early. But I saw her leaning to her birth families drifting that direction. And, and so, you know, of course, the first question Allie asked me was, you know, why would God do that? She's only 16 years old. Why would God do Well, God didn't do it in the first place. I don't, you know, and I don't have all the answers to the question. But I, but I do know, I know the Lord spoke to Pastor John and said they took her as far as they could take her spiritually. She had begun to make some decisions concerning her life. And, and I, I asked Allie this question. I said, would you rather her go and be with Jesus now or lose out on her salvation down the road and go to hell? You know, and Allie says, well, I want her to go to heaven, but I didn't want her to die. And, and I understand that. But, you know, and I'm not saying that was God or the wisdom of God. I'm just saying there's some things we don't understand. And God is so wise. And all I know is that Lily is dancing in heaven. Lily is free from all of her self-destruction that was in her life. You know, she's, you know, she's dancing in heaven, she's singing in heaven, and, and she's free and she's whole, and I'll get to see her again. Right. You know, and, that, and that's what I told Allie. We don't, a lot of times we don't understand why things happen. But, but when this friend of mine passed away, I said, God, I, you know, I don't understand. And he says, that's right, you don't understand my wisdom. I didn't know why. I mean, there's some speculations, but, you know, I, I didn't know why. Way too young. Powerful minister of God. Should have still been living. I don't know. Some of these questions we don't have. We've got to trust the wisdom of God in a lot of these situations. And so, so uh, Solomon is, you know, is, is writing here. You know, his, uh, Beersheba and, and David, his parents told him over and over and over again, get wisdom, get wisdom. And you read that after David had died and Solomon became, became the king, that Solomon prayed a prayer like this, and I'm paraphrasing it, God, I'm glad that you've given me these people, and I count it, uh, I count it, uh, um, what's the word, a high honor to rule over these people. Now give me the wisdom... I need to rule these your people. Yeah. And why did what was that why was that was the one thing he prayed for? Because his parents told him all of, all of his life, get the wisdom of God, get the wisdom of God, get the wisdom of God. So when he found himself in a situation that he didn't know how to to move forward in, he did what he what he heard his parents tell him, get wisdom. God, I need your wisdom. I know how to do this. I watched my dad do it. You know, I, I, I've been, you know, I've been around the palace. I've been around all these important people. I know how, I know the protocols. I know, uh, you know, how to handle things. But I need your wisdom. I need your wisdom. I have knowledge, but I need your wisdom in this. And, you know, what's David, what's Solomon known for? His wisdom. Because he, he knew, as, as you read through the book of Proverbs, it's full of wisdom scriptures. Yeah. I know, I know, I know, but how do I apply what I know? Exactly. You can apply what you know in several different scenarios many times. But what's the proper scenario? What's the scenario, that uh, proper application? What's the proper application to turn that, situation or to enhance that situation you may know how to do it I mean I know how to make an apple pie <laughs> yeah I, I know how to make an apple pie but 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 having the wisdom you know having the wisdom to make a good apple pie you know you can 
You know, my mom always used to say this, and of course it was to my, my detriment. It, it caused me to be a driven person. But she always say, that's good, but you can do it better. Now that sounds good on the surface, but to a child, it tells a child you're never good enough. You, what you do is good. So I've forgiven her for that, so she's, <laughs> she's in heaven. She don't care anyway. But, but she made me a better person for you. And... Uh, uh, but, you know, but that's the truth, you know, in, in some aspects. That's the truth. There's, you know, there's your way, and then there's God's way. That's wisdom. Yes. We can, you know, we can do it our way. We can take our meat computer, and we can process it in our own abilities, and we can make something turn out pretty good. I mean, a husband and wife get together, Put their knowledge together and have a baby. <laughs> That's knowledge. <laughs> now the wisdom part comes. How do I raise this little thing? And I'll tell you what, I don't know how people do it without Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's quite obvious they don't. But, but I'll tell you, I mean, there's some things as a parent you face sometimes that you don't, you don't have the answer for. I mean, you can process it through your mind and say, well, we can do this. And as soon as you say, think you can do that, then this other thought, well, we can do it this way, though. We can do it this way. Here's a, here's a novel idea. Ask for the wisdom of God. I know we had a situation with, with uh, Michael. Uh, he, had, uh, he was playing for the football team and... And he was, he got kind of crosswise with the coach and not Michael, but you know, it, it was the coach's fault, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but he got crosswise with the football coach and wanted to quit. And we told him, son, you've given your word and you keep your word to your hurt. <laughs> I mean, that's scripture. We laid scripture on him, you know. But, uh, and, but we told him, you know, it's your life, your decision. If you want to, you know, mess your future up, that, you know. And, and we kind of left it up to him. Of course, he was at school. I can talk about him. Michael, if you're watching, <laughs> Mama loves you. But, uh, uh, you know, he, you know we, we'd kind of left the decision up to him. But, you know, God started talking to me about it. And, and, uh, and so I said, but God, we've already told him, you know, we would, whatever he decides to do. And, um, and, and the Lord spoke this to me. He said, he said, um, the rod of correction drives foolishness from the heart of the child. And I said, God, you want me to whip him? He's 16 years old. <laughs> you know, he's bigger than me. Even though I could handle him pretty good, he was still bigger than me. I could use my body weight to put him up against the wall any time. But, um, uh, but uh, I said, he said, no. He says, the rod of reproof or instruction. And so, of course, he had mouthed off at school, and all of his buddies, yeah, he's going to quit, my, you know, eh, tough guy, you know. And... Uh, and so when he came home one day, I said, Mike, I need to talk to you. I said, you're not going to quit the football team. Well, you told me I could do I said, no. I said, you gave that man your word that you would play. Right. And, you, and you're, and you're going to keep your word, right. even if it hurts, even if it makes you look bad in the eyes of your friends, you're going you're gonna to stay on that football team, and you're going you're gonna to keep your word. Yeah. And uh, that was the wisdom of God. Because now he can go back and tell his friends, well, my mom won't let me quit the football team. You know, he could keep his face, you know. But, you know, the wisdom of God in, in raising your children. I mean, any, any two people can have a baby. But the wisdom to raise that child correctly. You can have all kinds of, you can read Dr. Spock's books. You can read, Lord, please don't. But, you know, you could, you could read, you know, Baby 101. You can get all kinds of knowledge. But you need the wisdom of God to raise a child. And God uses his wisdom to raise you. And it says here in verse 7, it says, uh, where were we at? Where did we start at? Five. Okay, so we are at seven. Do not be wise. It's just, just 
Perfect timing. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Evil here is just simply going your own way, not going God's way. It's not becoming a mass murderer. It's just, it's, you know, your, your own twisted way. It says, it will be because, now see, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health for, to your flesh and strength to your bones. The wisdom of God is health to your bones and strength, I mean, health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, he says, honor the Lord. Be smart, be wise. Be wise. There's not a lot of people nowadays that are wise with their finances. I know I haven't been (laughs) at times. You know, spent more than I make. That's called debt. <laughs> you know, it, that's not wisdom. And, and so, so he's saying here, he said, and I'm going to paraphrase this. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions. Give, honor him by giving him everything you have and everything you are. Yeah. Everything you have and everything you are. Hallelujah. That's honoring God. Why is it honoring God? Because it's saying, I trust you to dictate to me or tell me what wisdom is concerning the things that I've given you. I'll tell you, he's a lot wiser than we are with our things. Amen? It says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase. So, so your barns will be filled. We could put in our vernacular, uh, your bank accounts will be filled and your investments will overflow. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Verse 11, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. I've learned to love his correction. Now, sometimes he hits me square between the eyes with his correction. And it takes me a couple days to recoup. (laughs) And those days are called depressed days. Uh, You know, days of contemplation and like, you know. And uh, because sometimes his wisdom is revealed to us in an area of knowledge that we've hidden. Let me say that again. His wisdom comes to us to reveal to us things that we have knowledge of, but we've hidden. And so sometimes when God, I remember God telling me one time, he says, you're mad at me. And I said, no, I'm not. (laughs) You know, God tells you something like that and you argue with him, (laughs) you know. He says, you're mad at me. I said, no, you're not. No, I'm not. I'm not mad at you. He said, yeah, you are. And he started playing the scenario out for me, and I went, oh. I was shocked at me. <laughs> I mean, if somebody, if, if you had done that, I'd say, what's wrong with you, Tammy? <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> God does. <laughs> but, you know, when, when God said that to me, it's like, boom, the light comes on. You know, I see that now. Because, you know, God's voice to us is so pure. There's no deception in it. There's no darkness in it. There's no lie in it. And so when he tells us things sometimes that reveals attitudes or reveals um, um, feelings or offense or resentments or whatever, whatever he's revealing to us, He's, he's doing it in his tender love, his tender mercies and his loving kindness. He's, he's bringing those to us to, you know, it's kind of like when, when you were a little kid and you got a sticker in your finger and all mama had to do is get the needle out and you started screaming. Yeah. <laughs> but, but to get that sticker out is to remove the chance of infection. 
And so when God deals with us and wants to remove things out of our lives that harm us or could harm us, we need to just grin and bear it. We need to say, thank you, Jesus. Here's the sticker. You know, but we're like kids. We want to run sometimes. God comes with the sword of his spirit, you know, not a needle, a sword of the spirit. He comes to us with his word, but he comes in tender mercies. He comes in loving kindness to us because he loves us and he doesn't want infection to set in. He doesn't want gangrene to set in to the point that it kills us. That's why God deals with us concerning our iniquities, concerning our sins, because he doesn't want them to kill us. He's not trying to wound us. He's not trying to hurt us worse. He's not trying to put us down. He's trying to keep us alive. He's trying to keep us so we fulfill our days and, and, and walk our destiny out. Amen. And so, so, he, so he's saying here in wisdom, verse 11, My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. I told God one day, I said, you love me a lot, don't you? <laughs> Because it was just one of those days that he was saying, ah, 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 that's, that's an attitude that'll get you in trouble. Ah, 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 those are thoughts that'll get you in trouble. And I finally said, you just really love me, don't you? <laughs> because it was a day that he was trying to make a point in my life, a way I had gone all of my life, and he was working to work to get that out of my life so that I could, I could live a more peaceable life. See, God doesn't correct you, and, you know, and God doesn't correct you by breaking your leg, getting you in a car wreck. That's not how God corrects you. Now, if you keep pushing the envelope, you know, the devil is, has, a, has an entryway because you're rebelling against God. He has an entryway to, to steal and destroy. That's what the Bible says. But if you're listening to God... People always say, well, why do bad things happen to Christians? I don't know. Except we live in a, re- in a I started to say real world. This isn't real. Heaven's real. But we live in a world that is full of devil, the devil and his, his demons that have one purpose in your life, and that's to steal, kill, and destroy. And when, when we resist the correction of God... What we're doing is, is we're pushing against God and we're backing up into a territory that, that God has a, I, I don't want to use the word has a hard time helping us, but we put ourselves in a position that he can't help us sometimes. God can't help us? If you put yourself in a position, you know, he loves you. There's people in hell that put their self in a position, and, and God can't help them now. They, they've put their, God didn't put them there. They put themselves there because they, ta- they had an opportunity at one time to choose. And they chose wrong. But that wasn't God's plan. That's not God's heart for them. God, and in fact, the Bible says that it's God's will, it's his heart yes. that all men are saved and come into the knowledge of God. Why? Because when we come into a knowledge of God, now we have access to his wisdom. Hallelujah. And so, so he says here, he says, My son, don't despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. I mean, that's why you correct your children, isn't it? Because you love them and you don't want them to grow up to be fools. You don't want them to grow up to be jerks. <laughs> even though sometimes they do. But you know what I'm saying. You, you want to teach your children. You want to God train your children so that when, so when they get the knowledge of God, they now can flow in the wisdom of God. And so there's times that we have to correct them. And sometimes we correct them easy and sometimes we correct them hard. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's their choice. But, but it says here, it says, whom, whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son whom he delights in. It says, happy is the man who finds wisdom. 
The Bible says over in 1 Corinthians 1.30 that God has made Christ to become wisdom for us. That, that, that Jesus, Jesus is the manifestation of the wisdom of God. I mean, you think about it. God put himself in a human body and came into the earth and lived and died and paid the price for sin committed, high treason committed thousands of years before that wiped the slate clean. And, and, and by our choice, we can step onto that clean slate. Thank you, Lord. The wisdom of God. I mean, the devil knew it was coming. I mean, how many, how many babies did he, from clear back from, uh, you know, clear back, you go back to uh, Cain and Abel. You know, Abel was doing what was right in the sight of God. And so the devil says, oh, he must be the Messiah. So what did he, what did he have to do? He had hatred rise up in the heart of his brother till his brother killed him. And, 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 and then you, you go down, you see, you see Moses being, you know, the, uh, Moses being born in the earth. And the devil goes, there's something going on in the heavens. There's something rumbling in the heavens. And, and all of a sudden Moses, you know, Moses appears on the scene as the, as the great deliverer. You know, but, but before that, you know, the devil had all the babies killed. All the male babies thrown to the crocodiles. Why? Because he knew something was up and he was afraid it was the Messiah. You just, you go down through history and you see how time and time again, you know, babies were killed and history was tried to be wiped out because the devil thought he didn't know. In fact, he didn't even know that Jesus was the Messiah until Jesus showed up in hell one day and said, buddy, I'm here for the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Amen. 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 That was the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God's smart. God is wise, and it would behoove us to listen to his advice. Hallelujah. Praise God. It says, um, happy is the man who, who finds wisdom, verse 13, and the man who gains understanding. So he's saying, you know, gain the understanding, but don't just let understanding stand by itself. You know, I, you know, I understand certain principles of, well, let's, let's take it back to the accounting here at the church. I, I understand the principles of accounting. I understand deficits, uh, debits and credits. You know, I understand, you know, the tax laws, most of them. I under, understand insurance, some of it. But, you know, I understand those things. But when I was learning that program... All the knowledge I had wasn't doing me a whole lot of good because it wasn't the way I was taught. I was taught hard books, and now I'm talking computers. And so, so I had to draw on somebody else's wisdom. There was a lady in, in, um, in Clovis out of the Methodist Church. She came up for two months every Wednesday, and I gleaned from her wisdom. And now I can do the program most of the time. <laughs> now I can do it. But, you know, and I remember one time I was frustrated over something and Pastor Mitch Keys came in. And uh, he said, are you doing okay? And I said, I think I'm going to pull out every last hair in my head. And he says, Karen, you're anointed to do that program. Yeah. And, you know, that was a word to me. That was wisdom to me, God used a pastor from, from uh, Fireball. Can you imagine? A pastor from Fireball to give me a word of wisdom that turned that thing around for me. See, I had all the knowledge. I had the book. I, I had the book. I could look up anything I needed to look up. But it was how to apply the knowledge that I was having a problem with. And so, so when, when um, the lady from Clovis helped me out, she, was, she helped me take the knowledge and apply it, and now I have wisdom. See, and, and you can have the knowledge of God's Word. You can go out here on the street, 
and talk to some of these homeless people out here and they'll know the word better than you. They have the knowledge, but they haven't consulted wisdom and how to apply it to their lives. You can have all the word in you, but if you don't let God give you the wisdom to apply that word, it, that's all it'll be is a word. It, it'll just be head knowledge. But when you, when you let the Holy Spirit, who is the counselor, oh, I love it. The Holy Spirit, you know, is, is the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the wisdom of God. And, and when, you, when you ask him questions, God, I read that, and that sounds really good to my knowledge. That sounds really good. But what does it mean? You, you, and then you can take the wisdom of God and apply it. I know I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. Some of you are new. <laughs> um, back in the, in the late 70s, we came up in a situation with our business. We lived in Clovis, and we had a backhoe service in working construction. And um, uh, I hadn't paid enough um, estimated tax that year, so... We had like a $2,500 tax bill. Well, that doesn't sound much now, but back then, back in the late 70s, that, was, that might as well have been $10,000 to us. And, and so um, when, I, when I saw that, um, I said, you know, how are we, we going to pay that? You know, we're living, you know, job from job from job and didn't have a whole lot of savings. And, and um, so I, I decided, you know, well, Brother Hagen says that... Uh, that um, if you speak to the mountain and you believe in your heart and you confess in your mouth that you can have it. All righty, we got this. Father, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart, which wasn't true, but <laughs> it sounded good. I, I was scared. I confess with my mouth, you know, I believe in my heart, and therefore we have the $2,500 or whatever it was. And, um, you know, a couple days didn't come in the mail. So I'm, I'm louder with my confession, you know. And I, I go to church on Wednesday night, and, and I stand out in the vestibule. You know, somebody's surely going to hand me a $2,500 check. So I stand out in the vestibule out there in the front of the church, and church starts, so I go in and sit down, and I leave a little early so I could stand out in the vestibule. And everybody goes home, and I go home, and I'm mad at God. Of course, you've never been there, but I was. And, uh, and, you know, I just railed on God the next day. You really? Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> and I said, you know, your word says, and na da 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 You know, I'm just telling God, he says, Karen, he says, what does the tax law say? And, and I went, oh, you have to file, but you don't have to pay. You've got to pay it. But you don't have to file it. You don't have to pay it when you file it. And because I worked for the IRS. So anyway, I, um, uh, so I said, okay, so that kind of calmed me down a little bit. And, um, and then, but I went to him and I said, God, I said, why didn't that scripture work for me? He said, because you have no revelation of that scripture. He says, what's the scripture I gave you? And I thought for a minute. I said, well, you gave me Deuteronomy 8.18. That it's, you know, that he says when you come into all your wealth, he said, he said, don't forget that it's the Lord your God that gives you the power to get wealth, that he might establish his covenant. And he says, I'll give you the ability to get the money that, that you need. He says, he said, you believe me, but he says, he says, you can't live your life on another man's revelation. Amen. See, that was wisdom to me right there. That became wisdom to me. I knew from that point on, I had to hear what God said about the scriptures to me. And not, I mean, we can stand up here and tell you our revelations. That's information to you. But it may not be the wisdom of God to you. See, Brother Hagin's, you know, story about, you know, say to the, speak to the mountain if you confess with your mouth in, you know, uh, Mark 11, 23, 24. You know, that was his revelation. 
That was the revelation God gave him. Now, it doesn't mean he couldn't give me a revelation out of those scriptures, but that wasn't how he taught me about finances. He taught me about finances out of Deuteronomy 8.18. Yes. And that's wisdom to me. And so, so God will give you key scriptures in your life that he will continually compound the wisdom, his wisdom in those scriptures. And those scriptures become life scriptures to you. They're scriptures that, that speak to you. And, and every time God ministers that scripture to you, you see another facet of that scripture. Because it, those, the scripture, God's word, is just as endless as he is just as eternal as he is. Amen? And it says, happy, uh, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her, now he's calling wisdom a person. <laughs> a person. It says, for her proceeds are better than, the, than profits of silver and her gain is uh, gain than fine gold. You know, you can have all the money in the world and be stupid. You know, your kids' lives are wrecked. You're, you know, you've got umpteen marriages behind you. You've, you, know, uh, you know, you're having to take pills to go to sleep and pills to wake up in the morning. You can have all the riches that the world can offer you and be just stupid. You know, but I tell you, you begin to... Learn what God says about finances. You begin to learn what God says about riches. You begin to take the knowledge of his word. And I mean, you begin to take the, the knowledge you have of finances with the wisdom of his word. And now you've got a well-oiled machine. Now you've got something to work. Your kids are going to be blessed. You know, you're going to be blessed. You know, you're going to be able to bless other people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Does she need prayer, Jesse? You have a headache or... Let's just stop. God doesn't care. <laughs> in fact, he wants to do something. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I could see that she's in distress in some form, but God, you know what she needs. Your wisdom. We apply your wisdom right here, right now. Father, you know what she needs. You know, you know the word that she needs. You know the, the impartation that she needs right now. Father, we trust in your wisdom. We command her body to line up to the word of God. We bind it to the word of God that says, by the stripes of Jesus, she's healed. We bind it to the word of God that says that Jesus is her peace. And we say, peace, be still in Jesus' name. We speak to her storms right now in Jesus' name. We command them to cease and desist in her mind in the name of Jesus Christ. And we speak peace to her mind right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your peace right now. Peace in her body, peace in her soul. Father, let the peace that's in her spirit just spill over into her right now in Jesus' name. Because that's where you live. That's where peace himself lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's no sense in putting up with the devil in the middle of a good service. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, God knows what she needs. I don't. But he does. And he's working. Praise God. Hallelujah. But it talks about, talks about wisdom as a, as a person. It says, uh, and her gain is more than fine gold, and she's more precious than rubies. And all, thing, all, the, things you, uh, and all the things you may desire cannot be compared with her. Yeah. Wisdom. Hallelujah. God's wisdom. And it says, now listen, length of days is in her right hand. And in her left hand, riches and honor. Now, her right hand speaks of eternity. Uh, a, li a life uh, separate, um, 
uh, let's, I can't read my own writing, a spiritual world of, the, of a spiritual world to come. And the length of days is in her right hands. And her left hand are riches and honor. That's temporal. It's the life that we live here in this world. So, so it says the length of our days is, is in her right hand. God has, the Bible says in Psalms 138 that he's wrote the numbers of our days. And he's wrote our members in our books. And so God has, God has got your life determined. And he says if you'll live in wisdom, you'll see the length of your days. And, he's, and he says not only that, you'll see while you're here in this earth, you'll have riches and honor. Says, and, and don't think of just riches and honor as, as money and fame. You know, riches are so much more than money. They're some of the richest people in the world that live the most miserable lives and because they live outside the wisdom of God. Uh, and, and I know people that, that when we were over at the Philippines, when we were over in the Philippines, I saw people that in the natural don't, don't have a whole lot, but they were rich. They were rich with joy. I'd much rather have joy. I mean, I'd like money too, but I'd much rather have joy than money. I mean, because if you have no joy, you can't even enjoy the money. Amen? And it, and it says that, uh, it says that in verse 17, her ways are ways of pleasant, uh, pleasantness, and all of her paths are peace. See, when we have the wisdom of God, it may not compute in our knowledge, in our understanding, but when we have the wisdom of God, we've got the peace of God. When we, when we get a comprehension that we have a covenant, an eternal covenant with a living God, and we, we comprehend that, we, we just don't know it because we read it in a book, but we have the wisdom of God, we comprehend that. I'll tell you what, you cannot replace, uh, you know, there's nothing in this world that can replace that peace and that joy that comes with the wisdom of God in your life. And it says, uh, her, way, her ways are ways of pleasantness, and the, her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those that take hold of her. Now, that means you might not take hold of her. It says it's peace to those that take hold of her. Amen. But there's a lot of people that don't want to take hold of wisdom. Because wisdom tells them it's the proper or the right thing to do. Knowledge says, well, we've got these We've got plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. You know, if one, and if none of those work, we could have plan E. You know, and wisdom says, no, this is the plan. Yeah, plan A is all you got. You know, and, and, uh, and it says she's the tree of life to those who take hold of her. When we do it in the wisdom of God. We do something in the wisdom of God. It says, and happy are all who retain her. Hallelujah. It says, verse 19, the Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will be life to your soul and grace, I love this, around your neck. What's grace? God's, God's not only God's favor, but God's ability to press you beyond your own abilities. Amen. He can give you grace at a job that you aren't even qualified for. He can give you grace in, a, in, a, in a, you know... A, you know, your influence he can get, and push you beyond your own abilities. God knows how to get you to the top if you do it his way. Amen. It says, um, so verse 22, so they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. How? Through wisdom. 
Not just knowledge, but through the wisdom of God. When you lie down, here's some good sleep scriptures for some of you. When you lie down, you will, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Why? Because you're operating in the wisdom of God and you know everything's going to turn out His way. You're not making your own decision. See, that was the original sin. I can make my own decisions. I can be my own God. That's what Eve did. Because the devil says, God's holding out on you. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. He says, God's holding out on you. He knows that if you eat that fruit, he said, you'll, you'll be given the wisdom of good and evil, and you'll be just like him. Well, they were already just like him. <laughs> they were the hand of his creation. Yeah. And, and, the, and the devil deceived Eve in thinking that she could do it her way and get better results. How many of us do that every day? I can do it my way and get better results. We got to do it God's way. And when we do it God's way, it says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Or let's put it this way. You'll not worry yourself into 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Because you're trying to figure it out in your knowledge and not yielding to God's wisdom. He'll give you the answer when you need it. Amen. It says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be, your sleep will be sweet. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble when the wicked one comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. He will be your wisdom at that point to outsmart the devil in any of his plans. I'll tell you what. I, I'm, I'm telling you like David and Beersheba told Solomon, get wisdom. Don't try to do things in your own power, in your own knowledge, in your own abilities. Consult God. You know, he goes on in... Um, in, in chapter 4, I, I think it's in chapter 3 still. Yeah, it says in verse 5, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, your own knowledge. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Amen. I'm telling you what, we live in a day and a time that we need to be smart. We need to be wise and consult God in the decisions of life. Now, if you need to take a shower, please take a shower. <laughs> if you need to do your laundry, please do your laundry. You, you understand what I'm saying. Yes. But I'm talking about in decisions that we make that can alter our lives, yes. we need the wisdom of God. Yes. We may think we know how to do it. And we may have the education, we may have the knowledge, uh, the natural knowledge to do it. But we don't want our own knowledge and our own abilities. We want... We want to be on the on a the level plane with of God in his wisdom. I'll tell you what, he can put you in jobs that you don't even qualify for. Yeah. He can he can he can get you a house that your credit score says is impossible. That's right. I'm telling you. God is wise. And I'll tell you what, he can do things that you can't even imagine. Right. Ephesians 3.20 says he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond what you can even ask or think. Right. He is so wise. And he's got your answers. You may think you have the answers, but all of a sudden God comes out of the blue and says, but I want you to do it this way. And you go, but I don't know how to do it that way. That's not, that doesn't make sense. Good. You don't want sense anyway. You, know, you, want, you want God's riches. Amen. But, you know, you know, God will give us common sense. I'm not saying throw sense out. I was talking money-wise. But, but uh, you know, God will give us common sense. I mean, you know to get up in the morning, brush your teeth, comb your hair. At least we hope so. Everybody looks like here they've done a pretty good job of that. But... You know, beyond that, things that we don't know about. We don't know our future in every detail. God does. 
And he knows where we need to be, when we need to be there, and why we need to be there. Have you ever, God told you to do something, you say, but why? <laughs> why? You know, what, what do you always tell your kids? Because I said so. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Father knows best. Yes. Amen. And when God gives you instructions, there's nothing wrong with you asking, well, God, can you confirm that for me? There's nothing wrong with that. Confirm it with some scripture. Or confirm it through, you know, somebody. You know, give me a confirmation. When we, when we made the decision to come up here, we felt it was God's word to us in 1983. But we asked God for confirmation. And there's, he's, he's not against that. I mean, we were, we were plucking our kids out of school. We were moving away from family and friends and our church. You know, we were going into a territory that we didn't know anything about. You know, pastoring or the city itself. We didn't know a whole lot about. But all we knew is God told us to go to Madeira. And so we asked for confirmation. And God gave us, you know, three or four different confirmations about coming here. And so that was the wisdom of God to us. Those confirmations was God confirming his wisdom to us in what to do. So there's nothing wrong with asking God for confirmation. And in fact, that is wisdom, <laughs> you know. Asking God for confirmation in it. And, and then when you get the confirmation, the, you know what God said to you is the wisdom of God. And you can go right to these scriptures. It says, happy is the man who finds wisdom. Amen. And a man who gains understanding. The happiness of God, the joy of the Lord will be there. And, and so I just want to encourage you. You know, just, you know, we started a new month. But maybe you want to take a chapter of Proverbs you know, one day every, you know, today's the third, so you could, we're reading the third chapter. Oh, it didn't dawn on me till now. We're reading the third chapter. You know, tomorrow's the fourth, read the fourth chapter, on and on and on. And just, and just begin to draw on the wisdom of God in your life. If you've got a situation, in fact, if, if you've got a situation right now that you need the wisdom of God in, go ahead and stand up. You need the wisdom of God. You think you know how you're going to do it, but you're not... Not really sure. Hallelujah. Father, you see those that are standing. And Father, they're, they're admitting before you in this congregation that they may have knowledge, but God, they don't have your wisdom. So Father, I'm asking you right now that your wisdom come upon them, that you begin to confirm your word to them. Father God, even in their sleep tonight, God, you begin to give them innovative ideas and, and strategies. And Father God, I thank you and I praise you that as they spend time in your word, God, you show them where to step and where not to step. You tell them where to go and where not to go. You tell them when to set back and let you do it and when to move forward. Father God, I thank you and I praise you that your wisdom comes to them in Jesus' name in the days ahead. And Father, I declare and I decree to them that Jesus has been made wisdom to them and that wisdom will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. But I'm telling you, the wisdom of God is what's going to get us through the days ahead because he will unfold things before us and we'll see, oh my goodness, I didn't see that before. You know when you get a revelation? In the word of God, you go, oh, man, I didn't see that before. That's good. That was, a, that was a, a, a nugget of God's wisdom to you. It wasn't just knowledge because you've read it a hundred times before. It was a nugget of wisdom. The Bible said it's finer than fine gold. <laughs> it was a nugget of wisdom that came to you from God. I'll tell you what, God knows how to make you look smart. He knows how to make you look wise. Amen. If you'll just listen to him. Praise God. Pastor, do you have anything? You know, I just kept thinking of the scripture in James chapter 1. It says, does any person lack wisdom going through the tests and trials and the ups and downs of life? Let him ask of God. Let that person ask of God for wisdom. And it says that God won't hold out on you. He won't upbraid you. He won't make fun of you. He won't, you know, shine you on. But he will give you wisdom. And, you know, Solomon, Karen was talking about Solomon. Uh, when he became king, he understood that his 
job or his calling or who he was in life and what he needed to do was bigger than what he could handle on his own. He was humble about that. And the Bible says he offered up a thousand sacrifices. He went before God that day and he offered up a thousand animal sacrifices. And I used to, I, one day I was wondering about that. Why would he offer a thousand? And knowing that the, the Jews don't do, just do anything haphazardly, there's always a, a pattern, a purpose, and a reason in what they would do. And I began uh, digging in the scripture. I began to ask God for wisdom about that. And he led me over to, to Moses. Moses said that God would bless each generation down to a thousand generations. What Solomon was doing, he was saying, now it's my turn to, to stand in the king's office where my father stood, and I need to have your blessing, your wisdom, your help on me for my generation out of those thousand generations. And so he went, and by faith, he, you know, in his own way, he went before God and appealed to God to give him the wisdom and what he would need to do what he needed to do in his generation. He didn't just assume because he was David's son it would happen for him. And that night, the Bible says that night after he offered those, and I'm not telling you to go out and kill a thousand sheep somewhere. I'm, I, you understand what I'm saying? This was something he did naturally, but it was from his heart. But we are to you know, acknowledge that God, our, God has that for our generation. He has it for you and your generation. And that night, the Bible says, God came to him and said to him, what do you want? How would you like for God to show up in your bedroom one night and say, what do you want? And, you know, I, I think God knew that he could do that with Solomon because Solomon had already proved that he was after the wisdom, not just to prosper, not just to have a good life, but to be to the people in his generation what he needed to be to them. And so he just said, God, I need wisdom to do what you've called me to do. And God says, you've asked wisely. He said, you haven't asked for the necks of your enemies. You haven't asked for long life. And you haven't asked for wealth and riches. He said, so I'm going to give you what you need to do what you need to do in your generation, my wisdom. And he said, in that wisdom will come victory, will come the blessing, and long life. So don't chase those three things. Chase God and chase wisdom. And as, you, as he gives you that wisdom and you become to the people in your life and around you and you become you know, that, that vessel God can use to walk in that wisdom to be a blessing to others, all the others comes with it. Amen? And so if you lack wisdom, stop and say, Lord, what do you say about this? I need your wisdom and how to handle this. Lord, we thank you for that teaching tonight. We thank you for your word tonight, Lord. I know in the days we're living in, as you are completely shifting this world to align it for the end time scenarios that are coming and for the millennial reign that will take place, that we're living in days, Lord, days of confusion, days uh, where things are happening around us, in some cases faster than uh, we can even comprehend. But, Father, uh, you have wisdom for us. And not only can you, will you not be our source and our help and our protection, but you want us to be part of the answer in these days, not part of the problem. You want us, Father, to arise and shine, as it says in Isaiah 60. You want us to arise and shine in your glory in the dark days of this earth and be what you've called us to be so that we can help the people of this earth so that they can come into that place of knowing you, walking with you, and being with you for eternity. So, Lord, we thank you for that wisdom. Here tonight, Lord, in any decision, big or small, I thank you. We ask of you right now, as it says in James 1, give us your wisdom, Lord, and we will walk in that wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, let's stand. Praise the Lord. If you need prayer for anything, feel free to come up. We'll pray with you after service is over. But uh, glad you came tonight. Go out this week and find somebody to minister to, somebody to pray for. Ask God to use you and let his wisdom throw, flow through you. Amen? Amen. Well, Lord, thank you. We bless your people. As they go, use them for your glory. Let them be salt and light in our community this week. And, Father, may this be a week of your goodness, your glory, and all that you are in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, have a great week. We'll see you later on. Praise God.